What are the contributions of the Islamic Golden Age? This was a time of cultural, economic, and scientific prosperity in the Muslim world that took place between the 8th and 14th century. It was when the Islamic Empire was the center of progress in literature to philosophy, science to medicine, and mathematics to art the Golden Age, which notably coincided with the European Dark Ages. At the time, Islam was only about a century old and concentrated in the Arabian Peninsula, the Mediterranean, and North Africa. Once the Abbasids took over and formed a caliphate, the capital was moved to Baghdad, and Islam spread to other regions. The Abbasids were inspired by verses from the Quran and Hadith that emphasized the value of knowledge rather than just religious devotion, and they strongly pushed for advances in science, art, and commerce. Now that we're battling a pandemic, we all understand the importance of well-being once more. So let's start with Ibn Sina, also known as Avishena in the West. He was a Muslim polymath who is recognized as the father of early medicine. And he's also attributed with the invention of quarantine in his The Canon of Medicine, which remained a benchmark for centuries and set the standards for medicine in both medieval Europe and the Islamic world. Ibn Sina says a 40-day quarantine is the most vital method to stop the spread of an outbreak. The Muslim scholar had explained his theory that diseases spread through small particles invisible to the naked eye. A discovery that was proven centuries later after the invention of microscopes. He came up with the concept of al arbaniya which translated from Arabic means 40 days. An isolation method to stop the spread of diseases. In the mid-1300s, when the Black Death ravaged the world, all crew docking in Venice needed to stay on board for 40 days in quarantine before coming on land. The Venetians called it quarantina. Celebrated alchemist Al-Razi is also considered a central figure in the history of medicine. He was an early proponent of experimental medicine and is remembered for his various observations and discoveries, including a study which contained the first characterization of smallpox and measles. When we talk about philosophy, especially within the European context, one name that springs to mind is Ibn Rushd. He was among Muslim intellectuals who developed ideas central to modern scientific reason. He is now considered one of the greatest Islamic philosophers within the peripatetic tradition, which is derived from the teachings of Greek philosopher Aristotle. Italian Renaissance artist Raphael's School of Athens painting depicts Aristotle, Plato, and every great Greek philosopher of their time. But did you know that there is a legendary Muslim philosopher and thinker in the picture as well? The great Muslim thinker in it is Ibn Rushd, also known as Averroes. His writings affected much of the philosophical and theological ideas in medieval Europe and Western civilization. Ibn al-Haytham, also known as al-Hazan, is regarded as the father of optics. He was the first to prove that vision bounces from an object before being directed to the eyes. He's credited with paving the way for inventions like the camera, spectacles, microscopes, and telescopes. Allow me to introduce Ibn al-Haytham, a great scientist whose ideas led to the invention of the camera. You invented the camera? I laid the foundations for modern cameras by explaining how our eyes work. I found a way of projecting an image onto another surface through a small hole in a dark room, later called Camera Obscura. Think of all the things that evolved from this discovery. Cameras, cinema, all share the same principle. Cool. al khwarizmi has been called the father of algebra. He was a vastly influential scholar across a number of fields and introduced the world to the concept of algebra and algorithms. The word algorithm comes from the name of a Persian mathematical genius, Muhammad ibn Musa al-Khawarizmi. He made innovative contributions to mathematics, astronomy, geography and cartography. His books revolutionized mathematics in the West, showing how complex problems could be broken down into simpler parts and solved. Al-Zahrawi was a physician, chemist, and also considered the best surgeon of the Middle Ages. 
so much so that he's called the father of modern surgery. The Latin translation of his book, Kitab al Tashrif, remained the standard textbook in Europe for over 500 years. Ibn Khaldun wrote the Muqaddima, which many historians regard as the first academic work to deal with social sciences, demography, cultural history, and economics. And there's an argument that Khaldun is the father of modern economics, not Adam Smith. Ibn Khaldun was born in Tunis, modern-day Tunisia, in 1332, some 400 years before Smith. As a historian, sociologist, and demographer, Khaldun was one of the most respected and influential scholars of the Middle Ages. Khaldun's most well-known work, the Mukaddima, is an ambitious text that some say is the first attempt at a philosophy of history. And the similarities between Smith and Khaldun's work are striking. Like Smith, Khaldun points to labour, not gold or silver, as the source of wealth and advocates for the division of labour in the same way Smith did. So, while it's Smith that has been more widely read and more widely remembered, should it not be Ibn Khaldun that should take the title of the father of modern economics? Abbas ibn Firnas was a polymath and engineer who is celebrated as the first human to fly with a pair of wings which he built from silk, wood and feathers. And Ibn al-Nafis is known as the father of circulatory physiology. He is regarded as the first person to describe the pulmonary circulation of blood. Al-Baghdani, often called the Ptolemy of the Arabs, introduced several trigonometric relations like sine, cosine, and tangent, and his contributions to astronomy are invaluable. During the Islamic Golden Age, the House of Wisdom in Baghdad also played a prominent role. It was primarily built as a library, but also became the home of ancient and modern wisdom, preserving vital works of scholarship from Europe and the Middle East. In Baghdad, the ruling caliph created a house of wisdom. Here, Christian and Jewish scholars were invited to join their Muslim counterparts to share ideas, information, and creative work, which was all translated into Arabic. There are many more scholars from the Islamic Golden Age who we haven't had a chance to introduce. And even today, they play a huge role in our societies. Anyone who says Islam is anti-intellectual or anti-scientific is clearly wrong. Not only did the great Islamic scholars leave their mark in history, they also helped shape the world as we know it.